Even James May. Mr. May, you may begin. You have five minutes for your presentation. Uh, merci. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, Commissioners, CRTC staff, and uh, fellow Canadians out there. Uh, my name is Stephen James May. Uh, as you might be able to tell, I'm an over-the-air television advocate. I'm also a PhD candidate in communication and culture at York and Ryerson Universities in Toronto. And um, I have here, this is my antenna from home. Uh, it's a $45 antenna I ordered online from the United States. Um, it's also on a broken shovel handle. That was free. Um, and I, along with a $100 digital to analog converter box that I purchased in Napanee, Ontario, uh, this antenna, this lovely object, allows me to pil uh, pull in free over the air, uh, free to air digital over the air television signals. In my, uh, in my student apartment in Toronto. As a student, a graduate student paying $900 a month in rent, I truly appreciate uh, the signals that uh, this antenna provides me. And uh, in the interest of, of time, it's been a long day, I'll, I'll move forward. Um, it, I would like you to keep this antenna in mind when considering the LPIF objective of ensuring that Canadians in smaller Canadian markets continue to receive a diversity of local programming, particularly local news programming. I will be focusing on the receiving part of this LPIF objective. I'm interested in ensuring that Canada's digital broadcast, uh, Canada's television broadcasting system serves all Canadians. I feel the best way to do this is to, is to deliver television signals to our citizens in the most affordable and accessible fashion. Over-the-air television broadcasting, specifically digital high definition over-the-air television broadcasting, is a clear 21st century winner in terms of delivering local television programming to Canadians in an affordable and accessible manner. In response to your question, should the LPIF be uh, eliminated, my answer is no. As for the impact this would have on the amount and type of local programming produced, I'm confident, especially based on what I've heard today and yesterday at the hearing, um, that uh, the, the current state of the television broadcasting system in Canada, uh, while it may be improving, uh, it sounds like uh, from the, uh, what we've heard from CHCH and others, that they're not quite out of the woods. Um, and, and I feel that, that the elimination of the LPIF fund uh, would indeed impact the amount and type of local programming produced. In terms of methods or incentives available to ensure that local programming will continue to be produced, um, this is perhaps where my uh, intervention gets a bit radical. I, I feel that LPIF should be temporarily increased to 2% of BDU gross revenues for a period of five years, with a minimum of 0.5% uh, of LPIF funds being earmarked solely for the purchase and installation of digital television transmitters by broadcasters. So a 0.5% bonus, shall we say, uh, to be spent specifically on transmitters, which I know to date hasn't been uh, part of the, the fund specifically. Um, the reason I'm suggesting this is that the government of Canada decided long ago that switching from analog to digital uh, over the air television broadcast system in Canada would be in the best interest of Canadians. Continuing to deliver local television programming will rely in part on the purchase and installation of more digital tr television transmitters so that local programming can be received by Canadians. And it's for this reason that I propose a temporary increase in the LPIF um, with a particular portion earmarked for digital transmitters. Um, now, clearly I'm well served in terms of over the air in Toronto, but I, I have friends and family who live in non-mandatory digital television markets across this country that have already lost or stand to lose access to local television due to a lack of local digital transmitters. Um, my, my LPIF bonus, if you will, uh, it seeks to remedy this problem. Uh, I have some other comments, but... Um, to wrap up, uh, prior to coming here today, I was talking about the hearing on Twitter, and uh, I got some really great feedback from a gentleman in Toronto, Mike Vormitag, and he uh, sort of modified my proposal, which is part of the magic of social media, I suppose. Um, uh, he suggested that um, uh, the amount of uh, funds that a broadcaster could uh, receive for LPIF eligible stations in Canada would depend on uh, how much of their broadcast system has been shifted to digital. 
and not just in mandatory markets. So I thought that was a pretty, pretty good idea. Um, and um, that's all for now. Thank you for the time. Thank you both very much for the questions from we. Oui? First of all, I note that uh, you are a PhD candidate in communication and culture, so you've been close, and I think I heard that you've been following this hearing this week. Is that true? So you're close to these issues? Yes. Um, you understand the objectives of the LPIF as it was established? Yes. And I'm going to start with your second proposal, and that's the increase of the LPIF to support over-the-air television, which I believe when you initially put in your submission, that was really what you wanted to advocate when you were here. And I'm, I'm struggling with this, frankly. Um, you're one of the only who have proposed any sort of increase, and I'm really struggling with the fairness of what you have proposed, where you would suggest that customers of BDU systems who uh, should actually pay for those who don't choose to use the BDU systems to get greater access for those who choose not to use the BDU system. So how does that work? How is that fair to put a charge onto customers who choose to get their signals over a cable or other BDU system to pay for those who choose to get their signals and services over the air? Uh, I, I, it's a good question, and I think it's as fair as the original LPIF is, uh, as intended. I, it is interesting that um, when it when it, the commission decided to implement the LPIF, that it was determined that that broadcast uh, BDUs would would be contributing to it. So. My proposal is that it should continue, and in the short term, I feel it will be of value to the to the country to uh, have this uh, digital uh, transmitter bonus. But I, I feel it's as fair as the original fund. And how fair is the original fund? It c could that could be a good discussion. But you're supportive of the original fund. You've said it should be maintained. Yes. And you believe there's value. And that's the other thing I thought was interesting. You're obviously a, a young, innovative uh, user of communications and technology. And um, it was a brief conversation I had with the CBC, actually, in that I worried that if we were to continue with subsidizing the creation of programming for conventional television, for local programming on conventional television, we might stifle innovation or investments and in the natural evolution of the broadcasting system and forms of, you know, platforms for local content. You don't have any of those concerns. You think the proper, the proper place for us to be focused is on conventional television? Uh, well, uh, obviously, I have my own preferences. Uh, does Canada have a unnatural broadcast system? Yes. Uh, there are many incentives and subsidies for cultural uh, and uh, uh, safety uh, reasons uh, in terms of uh, mandates, uh, uh, you know, uh, specifics outlined in the Broadcasting Act. Um, um, I, uh, so, um, I think LPIF is part of that, uh, you know, milieu of, uh, of subsidies, uh, that Canadians feel is important or have historically, um, and, uh, uh to answer your, uh, uh, question, I don't see a fund like LPIF and innovation as, um, somehow competing against each other. I don't think that that having an LPIF mm, um, would necessarily stifle innovation.